let's let's go a little bit different track. I'd like to come back to Ms. Hedman uh, again, but uh, initially, uh, or first, um, EPA finally actively intervened in Flint in late January 2016. Um, Mr. Edwards, or Dr. Edwards, um, in the last few months, what steps have been taken to make Flint's water lead free? I saw you there Saturday. I saw you talking with residents, talking about filters and all of the rest. What, what steps have been taken? Uh, they have switched back to Detroit Water. EPA has implemented very good corrosion control effective December. We believe the lead levels are dropping dramatically as the pipe coating is reestablished. And we are currently sampling with Flint residents uh, last week to see house by house how much lower lead levels are now. And it's our hypothesis that lead is about four times better now than it was back during the height of the lead poisoning incidents in Flint neighborhoods. How, how long do you think it will take for, um, reasonably speaking, for Flint's water to be safe? Uh, in order to meet existing federal standards, which is not a high bar, as I've already said, uh, you have to do a federally approved lead and copper sampling event that Flint has never done in its history because they've never sampled the right homes and they've been using sampling protocols that miss lead and water risk. But do you have records even of those homes that they have sampled? Uh, yes, we do. Okay. Yeah, and, uh, but they did not have lead pipe as, they, as is specified. Like other cities around the United States, uh, Philadelphia, it's now acknowledged they didn't sample enough homes with lead pipe according to the requirements of the law. This is something that EPA has, has been allowing for since, since 2006. Do you uh, believe it's necessary and reasonable for Flint to replace all of the lead pipes? I think that we have to, uh, you know, obviously that's desirable. I think everyone wants that to happen. No one wants it more than me. But I think we have to uh, consider seriously what's the best place to, to invest in Flint's future to help Flint get back on their feet. Uh, they have needs in terms of the water mains. Flint has more water main breaks uh, per mile than almost any other city in the United States. That's one of the reasons their water bills are so high. So there's, there's many, many infrastructure needs that have to be addressed, and that's why I'm in favor, although I don't think it does enough, I'm in favor of this Flint uh, bill to get money to Flint residents for their infrastructure. We had heard, I believe, Saturday 40 percent water being wasted due to, due to breaks in the lines, leaking out. That's an amazing, and then you're talking about people having to pay those water bills when they're not even getting the water, let alone the water being safe to drink. Let me go back to Ms. Hedman. In your testimony, you stated that, quote, I resigned in part because of the false allegations about me that were published in early January. Uh, you specifically cite a January 12th Detroit News article uh, titled, uh, EPA stayed silent on Flint's tainted water in which Mark Edwards is extensively quoted uh, saying that the people who knew about the lack of corrosion cor control should have acted immediately. Uh, let me ask you, is it false, a false allegation to say that people who knew about the contaminated water should have acted? No, and we did. We did. As soon as I learned about this, I offered <clears throat> lead experts to the mayor and we reached out again to MDEQ and within three weeks had reached agreement that MDEQ would order Flint to, issue, to implement corrosion control as soon as possible. And in the interim, we issued a statement. I, I think Mr. Del Toro would not agree with that. And Mr. Edwards, uh, what, what's your position? She did nothing to protect Flint's children. Nothing. The article also quoted Michigan Senate Minority Leader Jim Ananick of Flint, who says, anyone who read his memo and failed to act should be held accountable to the fullest extent of the law. That's the Minority Leader of the Michigan Legislature, Mr. Ananick. Is he wrong, Ms. Hedman? Mr. Del Toro's memo contained the same recommendations that I had been receiving from others in EPA who had followed through starting on June 10th 
before that del Toro memo. And yet he was, was disciplined for his memo. No, he, he was, was disciplined not. for standing up as a whistleblower. He was not. He was absolutely. He was not. He was not. Mr. Chairman, with that disagreement, I yield back. Well, the, if the gentleman